Welcome to Food for Thought Friday. I am Greg Horn, and so glad that you joined us. Love to share little nuggets of wisdom that feel like that God has shared to me, whether it's through reading my Bible, uh, maybe through a devotional of the book that I'm reading, through a podcast I've listened to, a sermon I've heard, maybe through a conversation that I've had with somebody and God speaks through them, or uh, maybe it's something I've seen on social media. So uh, love to share some things with you. I want to share this quote I saw from Pastor Jensen Franklin, uh, he's down in Georgia. He said, when we walk in obedience to God, we don't have to fear the unknown. We can face whatever comes with each new step. Say that one more time. Pastor Jensen Franklin, when we walk in obedience to God, we don't have to fear the unknown. We can face whatever comes with each new step. And friends, I just want to say amen out loud when I read that earlier this week because, friends, it's just so true. When I felt like I just didn't know what to do and the future was unknown, uh, just do the next right thing is something I've learned. And just walking in obedience, honoring God with every area of my life, and he just eventually will make it clear what I'm supposed to do, whether he will just tell me um, and speak to my heart and mind, or just through circumstances, which is quite often, he'll just make it so obvious I know that it's from God. So I want to encourage you today to walk in obedience to God, even when you don't know what the future holds, and just face whatever you do with each step by simply being obedient to God. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, just such a great verse. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for people. So, you know, friends, whether you're, you've are you got a paying job or whether you're volunteering, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, just whatever you're doing, friends, today, I just want to encourage you to work at it with all your heart as you're working for the Lord and not for people. Just I tell you, friends, I'm learning more all the time that more is caught than taught. Say that one more time. More is caught than taught. In other words, people want to see Jesus quite often before they want to hear about Jesus. And I'm so thankful, friends, that uh, God uses simple people, uh, people like you and me, that you know, in the world's eyes may not be a big deal, but you know what? Each of us, because the Bible says we are all made in the image of God, and we're all he has to work with, friends. <laughs> and just I'm thankful that when we work at something and do it with excellence, it glorifies God. Now, notice I said excellence, not perfection, okay? Uh, you know, we, we, we may shoot for perfection, but a lot of times that's, you know, we fall short of that, Right. But I know there's been times I've struggled and put things off because I couldn't do it perfectly. And yet I'm trying to learn just to go on and be prepared and plan and then do the best I can, as the old saying goes, and just let the chips fall where they may. And God always honors and glorifies that. I saw this quote recently uh, by my good friend Dave Willis. That, uh, we used to work together at Northeast Christian Church many years ago. But he said, it's not our job to fix people. It's our job to love them even while they are broken. Uh, friends, that's so true. It's not our job to fix people. It's our job to love them even while they are broken. And friends, sometimes I've talked about this quite often, but it's just about lending a listening ear. Maybe it's sending a text to somebody and just saying, hey, I'm thinking about you and praying for you today. Uh, man, that can be a game changer for somebody. And I know it's been for me before. And one of the things uh, God's just been kind of putting back out in front of me several times lately is that, Greg, you're not the Savior. I am. And, you know, my intentions are always good, but sometimes I can feel like if I don't do something, you know, oh, this person's not going to make it or so forth. And, you know, we've all been their friends. And, yes, God uses us to help others, but I want to remind you that Jesus is the Savior. We are not the Savior. Like this quote by former President uh, Theodore Roosevelt, do what you can with what you have where you are. <laughs> oh, I love that. Do what you can with what you have where you are. And friends, I've been guilty before saying, you know, well, I could do this if I just had this. And yet, friends, God's shown me over and over, you know what? 
Yes, you could maybe like more things, but just work with what I've got you and I'll bless you. And then you'll know that it came from me and it's not for your glory. It's for mine. So somebody listening today or watching this on our YouTube channel, you needed to hear that. Do what you can with what you have where you are. Don't focus on what you don't have. Focus and be thankful for what you do have and use it to the best of your ability, asking for God's wisdom, his blessing, his favor, and his peace. And you'll be amazed what God can do. He'll show up in ways that will just blow your mind, friends. I've seen him do it in my life and many, many others. And yet, sometimes we, we focus on what we don't have instead of what we do have. And friends, God is more than able and he is more than enough to take whatever you have and just do miraculous and wonderful things. Psalm 46.10, simple but powerful verse, be still and know that I am God. Oh, friends, I'm so thankful for that. And maybe today we get done here in just about seven minutes that uh, you just, you know, turn off the radio or stop this podcast and just spend some time just being still and knowing that he's God and acknowledge him on the throne as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Saw this interesting statistic recently uh, by my friend Jess Toast. She said there are 8,670 hours in a year. If you attend both Sunday school or life groups in the morning at your church and a worship service every single week without missing, you'll be at church for about 156 hours a year. That's less than one week for the entire year, which for a week there's normally 168 hours. So how does that compare to the amount of time you spend playing sports, video games, social media, or just watching TV, vegging out in front of the TV? If you want to know God, you have to spend time with him. This holds true for all ages. The church, Sunday school teachers, volunteers, pastors, etc. are not responsible for your relationship with Jesus or your kids' relationship with Jesus. You are responsible for it. And that's so true, friends. I mean, more is caught than taught, as I tell people through Hope is Here and uh, Gardenside Christian Church, where I'm a pastor, that, you know, hey, nobody's good enough on 30 minutes on Sunday or 14 minutes during the week to keep your spiritual tank full. And we all need to have a personal relationship with Jesus and spending quiet time with him. And, you know, God's not up there trying to check on if you have perfect attendance at church on Sunday mornings or not. But friends, I know that I know that we're blessed when we show up. We do. God loves to speak his kids. He loves to speak to them. And also we were created for fellowship and community. And uh, man, people can be a blessing to you and you can be a blessing to them. And that's one of my favorite things about being a follower of Jesus how God just takes our ordinary lives and together takes the unique gifts that he has blessed us with, and together we can do things for God's kingdom, one individual life at a time. John C. Maxwell, wonderful leadership expert and former pastor, just a wonderful man of God and servant leaders, written some wonderful books. He had a quote that says, Leadership is not about titles, positions, or flow charts, it is about one life influencing another. I want to share that one more time. John C. Maxwell, leadership is not about titles, positions, or flow charts. It's about one life influencing another. Such, such good stuff there, friends. And I want to encourage you to trust God and, and just know that we can make a difference in each individual life that God entrusts us with. It puts in our sphere of influence each day. I saw this quote recently by Morgan Richard Olivier. It says, If you knew the extent of what a person had to endure to have the impact, empathy, and outlook they have today, you wouldn't be intimidated. You would be empowered. Friends, that goes back to what I've shared uh, often on Hope is Here over the past year or so that Everybody's dealing with something. Don't care who they are. Don't care how much money they have. Don't care what kind of car they drive, how big their house is, 
where they go on vacation. Um, everybody's dealing with something. And anybody that's had any kind of success in life, they've had to endure a lot of opposition and disappointments and setbacks. And I want to encourage you not to get discouraged about that if you're going through a challenging season of life. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge God and he will make your path straight. I like this quote that I saw recently. Um, not sure who said it. I'd love to give credit, but it says, Resilience is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. Oh, that's so good. Resilience is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And friends, if I've reflected on my life, there's been times I've got discouraged. I thought, God, how am I going to get through this? And I can just hear God in the background sometimes say, Greg, are you serious? How many things have I helped you through in the past? How many trials and tribulations have I helped you walk through where you could be encouraged and just know that it was me that showed up and helped you? Friends, it's such, such good stuff, and I want to encourage you to, to stand on that. Our memories of what God's done in the past. We get amnesia, I think, sometimes totally forget all the times that God has provided, that he has blessed, that he has protected us. And sometimes that doesn't feel good when somebody rejects us, if we want to go out then with them romantically, want to have a date with them. Or when somebody at a job just says, you know, I'm sorry, I don't think you're going to be a good fit in a job interview, and you don't get the job. Or maybe you, you've been let go. And somebody just says, hey, we decided to go a different direction, and we're changing things, and I'm sorry, your position is eliminated. You're not needed anymore. Friends, that's when our faith becomes real. And that's when we have to decide to lean into Jesus. And I'm so thankful that he's a good, good father. He's a generous God. And I love this quote by Pastor Rick Warren. He says, you can change your mind, and when you do, it changes the way you feel. <laughs> Uh, I know when I read that, I was like, hold on, that, let me read that again. That's right. You heard it right the first time, but I do want to say it again. Pastor Rick Warren said on one of his Daily Hope posts recently, he said, you can change your mind, and when you do, it changes the way you feel. And friends, I've found that to be true. Uh, sometimes I don't, I'm a little hesitant or I'm slow to do it, but when I do change my mind and the way I think, it will change the way that I feel. And as I share numerous times over the past six years, we've been blessed and very fortunate to do. Hope is here, okay, is that sometimes we have to act our way out of feelings. In other words, do things that make us uncomfortable, things that, you know, we don't feel like doing. We can't always trust our feelings. And sometimes we just have to do the next right thing and trust God and be obedient and be faithful and not go on our feelings whether we feel like doing it or not. And I know in the wintertime that can be tough when it's dark and overcast all the time. You get up and it's dark and overcast. and you, you, Before you can get home from work, it's dark and overcast. And yet, friends, we don't have to stand on what's going on, the weather around us or whatever the season of feelings we're in. We can simply do, like Pastor Rick says, you can change your mind and when you do, it will change the way you feel. Well, fortunately, we're out of time. You've been blessed by this program. I hope you'll share it with somebody else. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.